Hi, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. So yesterday AMD had their announcement for their Radeon 6000 GPUs and honestly I thought it was a very exciting show. So it was really great to see that we finally have some competition at the top end of the market. Uh, AMD has brought out some GPUs that compete with the RTX 3080 and the 3090. So I think that's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out, um, both in terms of um, how they one-up each other and also in terms of hopefully lowering the prices and also, you know, getting some more stock in the market. Uh, but uh, just to quickly recap on uh, yesterday's announcements, uh, the real star of the show really uh, was the RX 6800 XT, which is more or less about the same performance as the 3080. And it's also priced a little bit lower, so it's $649. So I think if you haven't made up your mind, uh, yeah, you really um, could have a look at the RX 6800 XT as a very viable option uh, for your next GPU. Uh, with In terms of the RX 6900 XT, I might do a separate video on that, but just quickly, I think it's still a little bit overpriced at $999. And finally, with the RX 6800, that's priced at $579, and that looks to be an RTX 3070 competitor. So I think it's so close to the RX 6800 XT that I think most people could probably just jump up to the RX 6800 XT, uh, given that it's going to be about 20% uh, performance difference. But we're not here to recap the show. I want to talk about one of the most interesting design choices from AMD in their um, Radeon 6000 series GPUs. And that is their choice to go with a 256-bit memory bus with Infinity Cache over a larger memory bus, um, which is what NVIDIA opted to go with um, in their... A GPU. So with the RTX 3080, they opted to go for a 384, or sorry, 320 bit memory bus. The full GA102 chip is a 384 bit memory bus. So I want to look at um, the Infinity Cache and what that means um, if you decide to go with this uh, RT RX 6800 XT. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to look at some AMD charts here and then we're going to look at what some tech writers have been saying about the Infinity Cache system as well. So let's go over the RX 6800 XT specs. Now it's a 72 compute unit GPU. It has 128 megabytes of this Infinity Cache and it has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. And one of the reasons why they have this large pool of cache is the fact that they opted to choose a 256-bit memory system which has the 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 and if you work that out, um, if you work out the memory bandwidth, that's uh, 512 gigabytes per second. Now if you contrast this to the RTX 3080, that has a memory bandwidth of 768 gigabytes per second, that has much faster GDDR6X memory and that also is running on a 320-bit memory bus. So you can see there's a big difference in terms of the memory bandwidth. So the question is, how effective is this Infinity Cache? And also, uh, whether this compensates well enough for the lower memory bandwidth. So if we take a look at some information on AMD's website for the Infinity Cache, they say that this is an all new cache level that enables high bandwidth performance at low power and low latency. This global cache is seen by the entire graphics core, capturing temporal reuse and enabling data to be accessed instantaneously. And you can see on this chart that it's effectively saying that uh, with the 128 megabytes of Infinity Cache, it offers up to three times more effective bandwidth than regular 256 bits GDDR6. So essentially I broke it down into what I think is actually happening. So essentially we have the 16 gigabytes of VRAM that is operating at 16 gigabits per second and the memory bandwidth is 512 gigabytes per second and then it goes into this infinity cache and then ultimately from there, it goes into your compute units and then ultimately it goes to your game. The game is going to call for the data and then it's going to call for the data from the infinity cache. And then hopefully that amount of cache is more than enough to compensate for that low VRAM uh, 512 gigabytes per second speed. 
So I thought I would take a look at some of AMD's performance charts here for the RX 6800 XT and see if there are any clues as to whether the 256-bit memory bus with the Infinity Cache was keeping up with the RTX 3080 and their 320-bit memory bus. And the easiest way to tell is to look at the 1440p chart and the 4K gaming chart. So in 4K gaming, you do need more VRAM and you do need to access that more. So that would mean that ultimately you do want more memory bandwidth if you have a higher resolution. So we should see this play out in some of these charts or not if the Infinity Cache is actually keeping up. So I've got the 4K and the 1440p chart here side by side. If you look at the first game here, which is Battlefield 5, and it looks to be that there's a bigger difference at 1440p for the RX 6800 XT than there is at 4K. And there looks to be a bit of a pattern here with the RX 6800 XT having better performance at 1440p than at 4K. For example, for Doom Eternal, the RX 6800 XT has less performance and it's slightly less than uh, the RTX 3080, but at 1440p, the RX 6800 XT actually beats the RTX 3080. So in the name of science, I've decided to draw some lines on these charts to get some performance numbers for the RTX 3080. And then with that, I could work out a difference between 1440p and 4K, and then obviously from that, I could work out a percentage difference and see if there was a bigger percentage difference for the 3080 than there would be for the RX 6800 XT. So this is my own chart with all of the performance numbers from the AMD charts. So as you can see here, for Battlefield 5, we have NVIDIA card with 41.7% difference between the 1440p performance and the 4K performance. And for the RX 6800 XT, that's 42.9% difference between the 1440p number and the 4K number. So filling out the rest of the results here, there is a bit of a pattern. As you can see with all of the games, the AMD card always has the highest percentage difference. Sometimes it's by like 1%, sometimes it's by like 3%, but it is a little bit higher for the AMD cards. And what that is saying is that the 1440p result is very high for AMD and the 4K result is not as high. So let's take a look at what Anantech had to say. And this is written by Ryan Smith and he says, this memory bandwidth of 512 gigabytes per second is admittedly a bit anemic for a flagship video card and is where AMD's new Infinity Cache technology will come into play. In short, based on currently available data, it would appear that AMD has dedicated a surprisingly large portion of their transistor budget to it. Navi21's Infinity Cache would be at least 6 billion transistors in size, which is a significant number of transistors even on TSMC's 7 nanometer process. Now Navi21 has 28 billion transistors, so that's roughly about 20% of the die. Anantech also writes, but AMD isn't just spending transistors on cache for the sake of it, there are several major advantages to having a large on-chip cache even in a GPU. As far as performance per watt goes, the cache further improves RDNA 2's energy efficiency by reducing the amount of traffic that has to go to energy expensive VRAM. It also allows AMD to get away with a smaller memory subsystem with fewer DRAM chips and fewer memory controllers reducing the power consumed there. Besides the die space cost, there are numerous outstanding questions about performance, how the cache is used, can developers directly access it, and how well it works with existing software. Dedicating so much of a GPU to a large on-die cache memory pool is arguably a risky decision. Of everything AMD is doing today, the Infinity Cache is the most revolutionary change, but is also the most questionable for a PC GPU. So the question is why did AMD choose a 256-bit bus over a 384-bit bus that probably would have helped them more for 4K gaming? Now one of the more obvious answers is that it's cheaper on the 256-bit bus and there are less memory modules. But I think the other reason is that AMD designed these GPUs one or two years ago and they must have been thinking at the time that Nvidia were on TSMC 7 nanometer, and if that was the case they would probably have the top performing card. 
So if they had the top performing card, then AMD probably thought that they had to provide some alternative options. So if Nvidia were on a 384-bit bus, then AMD, it would make sense for them to go on a 256-bit bus, thereby flanking the Nvidia options. So if Nvidia had 12 and 24 gigabyte cards, then AMD could come with 8 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte cards. So if a customer thought that the 24 gigabytes was too much, then they could opt for the 16 gigabyte version, uh, the AMD 16 gigabyte card. So I think that's probably why AMD decided to go with this uh, 256-bit bus, plus the Infinity Cache would help them alleviate any of the differences between the memory bandwidths. And I think they must have been pretty excited to learn maybe two or three months ago that Nvidia's card on the Samsung 8 nanometer probably didn't reach expectations and that they could end up competing with something of their own. So that's probably when the AMD RX 6900 XT was born and that was the full die and they would just overclock it a little bit more and it would be able to compete with that 3090. So overall, I think it's really exciting that AMD have some GPUs out there that can compete with the NVIDIA's top-end GPUs. And while they may not have necessarily designed them to be competing with them in that way, ultimately that's how it's turned out and that's good news for gamers. All right, that's going to be it for this one. Let me know your thoughts on the Infinity Cache system and also the 256-bit memory bus of the AMD GPUs. Do you think it's going to affect your gaming performance? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to click on the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.